There's a great quote that I really like and it goes something like find someone who shouldn't be good at what they do but they manage to do it anyway. I think it's a really useful quote because a lot of people will go to like the top athletes or the really talented people and ask them you know how did you achieve this and to be honest they could have done anything and they still would have excelled at what they did because they just have pure talent so their methods aren't necessarily the best way to learn whatever they did so the people who have learned how to rock climb but only have one hand or the guy that skateboards and he can't see so i kind of want to document my own journey like I've got hearing issues and despite that I was still able to learn Chinese. I just want to show, share with you my experience so far. I had a really big response on my last video. I just got so many views and likes and comments that like way more than I expected. So uh, thank you all for that. But the question I got asked the most is how did you learn? So that's what I'm going to share in today's video. How I started from knowing zero Chinese to where I am now. If you haven't seen that video, I'll put a link. I think it should be here. And in that video, I'll also be speaking Chinese. I find it really annoying when people are like, oh, yeah, this is how you learn a language or this is how you do this thing. And then they don't sh demonstrate any ability at all. I'm like, why should I trust you? So um, yeah, go check that video out. My dog's sitting on me. Mina, there we are, the Mina cameo. But anyway, she's gonna be jumping on me for the rest of the video, I'm sure. So a few years ago, I made a bucket list and on that bucket list had a whole bunch of things uh, but mainly because of that bucket list I quit my job and I went traveling for one year around Asia there's a whole bunch of stuff that I wanted to do and one of the things on that bucket list was to learn Chinese so after I did my year of travel and checked off a lot of the things on the bucket list I said to myself you know how am I going to learn Chinese how do I do this I didn't really give it too much thought. I kind of wanted to be in Asia. So um, I managed to get myself a job in Taiwan. And I was like, great, I'll go to Taiwan. Uh, I'll be surrounded in Chinese, you know, I'll learn it there. You know, it will be easy, right? Obviously not. So let's rewind a little bit. Before I went there, I downloaded a few apps on my phone. I had a little play around. Yeah, I got some basics down. A lot of people were saying in my video that my tones are pretty good. I think the reason my tones aren't too bad is because as a deaf person, I was worried that my tones were going to be awful. Like that's so important to language and tones and hearing don't really match. So what I did when I downloaded the apps, I really focused on tones. Like I put a lot of effort into making sure every single tone was, uh, I could tell the difference and you know, I could pronounce how to say the first tone, the second tone and whatnot and make sure like ma, 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 ma. Everything was just perfect. Um, so I spent a lot of time doing that and it looks like it paid off. So then I moved to Asia and I was like, yeah, I'm going to be working in Taiwan for one year. I'm going to be surrounded by the language. I'm going to teach myself Chinese and just talk to people. I'm going to be awesome. And I kind of had this mindset because I can, I've taught myself stuff. You know, I, I taught myself how to do parkour. I taught myself how to teach parkour. Um, I taught myself how to edit videos, you know, teaching myself and, you know, sort of self, uh, self improvement. It's not a foreign concept to me. So, you know, I sort of, you know, apply myself, look up some things online. I'll be able to learn Chinese and it obviously wasn't the case. Firstly, Chinese is one of the hardest languages to learn for an English speaker. Uh, and that's just because English and Chinese are just so vastly different. You have completely different grammar, uh, written styles, spoken tone, everything's just different. Um, if it was something like maybe Spanish or German, maybe I could have done it, but for Chinese, it's so different. And the second reason is I'm at a disadvantage right from the get-go. Listening is such an important part of Chinese and by having uh, a disability in listening it's just going to impair you right from the start so that was I was a bit cocky a bit arrogant to think that I was going to get it done within a year and that was a, a year while I was working like not just full-time study but working and just doing a little bit of Chinese on the side but yeah I was I was young and naive and after one year all I could say was uh, 
很高兴认识你。我不会说中文。And and that was pretty much it. Just after one year, and within that year, I bought myself a textbook. I tried to、uh, I tried having a Chinese tutor here and there, and it it didn't work. Let's put it that way. It, it didn't work. I was way over ambitious. So after that one year, I. Quit my teaching job. I was teaching English. I quit my job as an English teacher, and、uh, I went and applied for the language centre called Shida. I applied as a complete beginner and started book one. And I think that's when my Chinese journey really started. And that's when I say I started learning Chinese. Because from that point, I've pretty much been full time studying Chinese for the last three years. So at Shida, you're studying Monday to Friday, every day for three hours. It was a challenge. I really enjoyed it. We had like other students. My, I think I had like maybe seven other students in my class. I was the only、uh, native English speaker. Everyone else was like Italian and Korean, Indonesian, and Japanese. So it was a really interesting mix, and it was really cool. And first three months, I got a lot of basics, and I really enjoyed myself. And I thought this is fun.、Uh, it was also a challenge. Having to write every day, you have tense here every day, which is like dictation. So the teacher will say some words, and you've got to write down the Chinese and opinion. I enjoy the process, and I also remember like the first few weeks, every single day,、uh, like two hours into class, I just have like a big headache, and I don't know whether that's because I'm just focusing so much on listening that my brain was going like into start melting and stuff. So after three months, you know, I finished book one. I was like, let's do this again. Let's continue for another three months. Let's do book two. Yeah, my second three months at Shida were intense. So all of a sudden, the teacher was not speaking any English, and she was only speaking Chinese. And then the dictation got harder, and there were a lot more words every chapter, and the tests got more intense. That was when I guess my listening skills weren't quite as developed as everyone else's, so they were kind of flying ahead, and I was getting left behind. I was struggling to keep up with the writing, and I was listening to these recordings and just like couldn't make heads or tails out of them. I was really struggling, and it got really.、Um, I felt I felt the pressure sometimes. I got really stressed. So after those six months, I stopped studying at Shida just because I wanted a bit of a break. And also, there was another reason. I would go into restaurants and I'd go to Seven Eleven and whatnot, and the waiter or the waitress would ask me questions in Chinese, and I wouldn't understand anything that they were saying. I was like, I've been studying for four, five, six months. You know, why can't I understand these daily basic conversations? And that was kind of like getting me down as well. Like the reason I'm learning Chinese is to have these daily life conversations and just be able to get around town and stuff like that. So that was kind of getting me down as well. So after six months, I stopped studying at Shida. I started doing a bit of、um, self-studying, which was like I find topics that interest me and watch YouTube videos and whatnot. And one thing I did that I think was really, really useful for me was when I go into Seven Eleven or go into the shop or whatever, and I know they were going to ask me a question which I still didn't understand. I get my phone. I'd hit record. On the voice recorder, and I put it in front of me, and then when they ask me that question, I obviously still couldn't understand, but I have it on record. And then I would take that recording and go ask a friend, or I'd have a a one-on-one tutor, and I'd go and ask her, you know, what did they say to me? Can you explain this grammar pattern? And what are these words? And、I'd、write it down in Chinese, and start to really break down what they could ask me. And that was really helpful for me. Like I kind of. Got a lot more confident in Chinese because I could go to these repetitive situations. Like I would literally just go into restaurants and ask about their booking procedure, just so I could practice this conversation. Or, you know, I'd go and buy coffee at different places just so I can see how different people would like order coffee or how how the the、uh, the waitress or whatnot would ask me questions regarding my coffee order. So getting really confident in those aspects really made me feel like I was improving. Of course, for me at least, self-studying,、uh, you lack the consistency, and I'll get lazy. You know, I get lazy, and sometimes I didn't want to study. Sometimes I just want to chill, whatnot. And that's the real benefit of having classes: is that you're forced to go every day, and there's that external pressure, and you kind of feel、um, compelled to keep up with your classmates and make sure that the teacher can't call you out. 
and things like that. And when you're studying by yourself, you don't get that. Obviously, everybody's different. Um, so then I went back to class, and this time I went to a different school uh, that didn't require all the writing, so I could focus a lot more on my listening and my speaking. And I studied book three. After finishing book three, I took another break, did some more self-studying. Yeah, for me, I can't do the same thing consistently. I could tell you right now what my methods are for studying Chinese, but in two months, I would probably do, be doing something different. I just, I can't do the same thing over and over for months and months, I get bored. So these little breaks are really good for me. Although it probably extended my Chinese learning journey into a lot longer than it should have been, it just kept me sane. Took a break, self-studying, did my own thing. And then finally, I went back for book four. And for this, I went back to Shida and I also applied for a scholarship. So I applied for a three month scholarship, uh, which means I didn't have to pay anything, which was awesome. I definitely recommend if you don't have too much money or you're thinking about studying Chinese, but you don't know how you're gonna fund yourself, have a look into the scholarships. Uh, my friend from Canada did a one year scholarship. Uh, I just did three months. And my goal with that was just to finish book four. And after three months, finish book four, to be honest, I'm glad I only applied for the three month scholarship because it, it, it just gets repetitive. I don't think I'm a classroom learner. That isn't where I get my energy. I, I have fun with Chinese when I'm just talking to random people, when I go out and I just bump into someone, they ask me a question, you have random conversations and stuff like that. That's where the fun is. For me, sitting in a classroom, taking tests, it helps. It really, really helps a lot, but it's just not where I get my fun. And that's basically how I learned Chinese, how I got to where I am now. There's a lot of little things that I did between when I was self-studying, like TV and playing games or whatnot. I might cover that in a different video. Yeah, I guess the main takeaway for me is classes offer really good structure. Being in the environment helps once you can speak the language. Um, but also I need lots of little breaks and just keep switching up the methods to keep yourself interested. And within those three years, there were definitely times where there's like, I don't want to study Chinese. And I probably wouldn't study Chinese for like a month. I would just take a break and just not do any active study. And of course, with, with living in Taiwan, I'm having to speak Chinese almost every day. So there's definitely there was sort of the passive practice, but in terms of like reading a book or you know, breaking down grammar or whatever. There were times where I just didn't do that. And I didn't feel like it. And at the time I feel quite bad for it. I'd be like, you know, I'm wasting time here. I should be like 100% hustle, hustle. But for my own sanity, it was good that I took those breaks and I'm not burnt out. I'm still learning now. I'm finding new and interesting ways, even after three years. And um, yeah, I hope that kind of answers the questions. It's a bit of a rant. Yeah, let me know if you have any other questions. I might do another video showing different methods of studying Chinese or just studying any language in general. And if you enjoy the video, please like, subscribe, leave me a comment, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.